In our globalizing food industry, we all benefit from harmonized processes and regulations. And that is why the European Hygienic Engineering and Design Group supports the Global Harmonization Initiative. The subject matter experts of the European Hygienic Engineering and Design Group contribute to various seminars and congresses worldwide. We met quite a few of them here at the 2019 Global Harmonization Initiative World Congress. And we even bumped into the president. Welcome to this first Congress of the Global Harmonization Initiative. An organization that tries to produce or to make sure that people in this world have enough safe food. The reason why we have EHEG co-organizing one of the sessions is that they have a, the specialism of providing equipment and design and process lines that make sure that if you have raw materials that have been safe, that are still safe, the products are still safe at the end of the process line. Uh, that is a technology that is very well known now in Europe and in the Western world, but there are many parts in the world where they don't have that knowledge. In a Congress where we have people from all over the world, including people from Africa, South America, Asia, they learn also about experts that are available in, uh, in, the, in Europe in, in an organization like EHEDG. Enjoy! All of the courses were modified according to the existed uh, guidelines which were provided and issued by uh, EHEDG. Our university uh, became the member of EHEDG since 2015 and we are the first university in the world uh, who offered the master program in hygienic engineering in design in English uh, since this year. We are here because we want to uh, share our, our experience with other universities and with other companies and we want to uh, invite them to join us uh, to realize this program at the respective level. Uh, we've produced a guidance document, guidance document 44, and now are interested in, uh, in our updating that, that document. It's now five years old and we're looking for anybody who is interested in helping us update this, this document in terms of construction companies, food manufacturers, how perhaps we can build food, food facilities a little bit better. This uh, conference at, at, uh, in Leiden is, is a little more practical and uh, I'm giving a presentation on uh, the, the, the practical aspects of how to undertake building work. So if we're undertaking building work in a food factory, particularly when production is going on, how can we safely do that? So how can we safely segregate those activities from production and how can we make sure that no hazards generated during that building work get out and cross-contaminate our, our food products? I am from Sweden, work for International Foundation for Science. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm French and from Madagascar, so I like to say all this. Is. <laughs> yeah. I'm Marco Leon Felix from Mexico. Um, I'm uh, one of the three ambassadors in Mexico for the Global Harmonization Initiative. And I'm also uh, the EH representative in Mexico with the Mexican Society for Food Safety for consumers, for food consumers. Well, for every consumer, of course. <laughs> Everyone consumes food. So we are here because we are very interested in having more knowledge in uh, the harmonization and because it's very important, because Mexico is one of the most important countries exporting food to the entire world. So it's very important for us to have a, a global harmonization mm -hmm. system. And we are suffering <laughs> that kind of uh, problems when the exporters have to export to Europe or to America. There are differences between them, so it's not easy to understand that. So we are trying to get uh, more conscious of that. And it's very important because it goes in two ways. Uh, in developed countries, you receive more and more uh, food from developing countries, but we receive also those that are not sold out here in developing countries. And it's very important then to harmonize this food law for, I do not think only of food trade levels, but really also on people's health. It should really protect every citizen 
on the same way and at the same level. And I think this is a very good platform to discuss and to see how we can reach there. It's a totally independent and non-profitable organization and we are searching for increasing the number of the possibility all around the world in order under unified conditions to perform different type of tests in different fields of the research and education program. Okay, so I'm here to share my expertise in the field of hygiene design with other academic people and who want to learn more about it and also to motivate them to become a member of EH and also to gain experience in the field of hygiene design because it is important in the food industry there is a lot of knowledge but I think we also must make aware academic people that there is research going on in the field of hygiene design and field of cleaning and that it is important because otherwise they think there is no real proof that hygiene design is important and this is what many people from universities are sharing and demonstrating the importance of hygiene design. My name is Max Hesse, I work as a team leader for hygienic processing at the Fraunhofer IBV in Dresden. Um, we are strongly connected to EAGDG. Um, we helped to create teaching uh, documents, uh, guidelines, and one of our tasks was to create a um, new uh, cleaning test for open uh, processes. And yeah, today I'm here to talk about um, standardization for cleaning tests and how it helps to uh, prevent things such as um, you know, foodborne illness because of uh, a lack of um, uh, product safety, um, standardization and certification uh, and that matter helps to um, yeah, facilitate trade because you know what you buy and what you get and you can rely on that. Hygienic design helps to uh, prevent um, cross-contamination and stuff like that. I think this is a unique opportunity to meet people and talk about harmonizing the legislation globally because we're facing a lot of global issues at the moment and they won't decrease in coming years. And trying to be able to talk to each other, trying to be able to find solutions together on how we can proceed towards a more sustainable future I think is crucial in order to be able to have a prosperous future. I've been uh, giving a presentation here on student learning and how we can include hygienic design in student learning. And I'm trying to advocate that it would be brilliant to have a resource space for student learning programs all over that we can tap into and share knowledge and share ideas of how to use different lab exercises, different teaching methods in order to teach our students, both from a mechanical engineering background as myself, and also food biologists and microbiologists in order to look into these issues together to raise awareness and gain knowledge on how to best utilize the food resources that we have in the world.